Okay, on to our last speaker in the session, which is Jan Franke from Ground Radar. That's reassuring everybody leaves the room when ground penetrating radar comes on. <laughs> I get the hint, that's fine. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're gonna talk about advancements in ground penetrating radar for mineral exploration. Everybody knows what GPR is, you see it on TV all the time, it's these little cart things that roll around the streets and find pipes under the ground, right? And that's kind of the, where the research is right now. It's all about a high resolution uh, finding pipes, uh, and that's a multi-million dollar, hundreds of millions of dollar industry across the world. Um, it, these things are designed for shallow surveys and of course they use a very simple impulse transmitter and they don't have to do much, they only have to penetrate about two or three meters to see those pipes. But for the mineral exploration, obviously, we need to go a lot deeper and make them a little bit more robust and feel worthy. So the current state of the art with GPR is something completely different that you know you don't see on TV and you don't see uh, uh, on the streets. And, and these are towed uh, systems, so they're they're simply uh, a hose with all the electronics built in these days. And the entire system weighs about four kilograms, so they're very very portable. And and they use these inline antennas. And and our latest technology uses full waveform sound. And what that means is the signal to noise ratio is dramatically higher. So what was uh, a 20 meter penetration uh, four or five years ago is now 40 meter penetration. So we're still not in the kilometer range or even in the hundreds of meter range, but this is kind of the state of the art of the technology right now. And there's lots of applications, everything from tropical weathering environments, so uh, bauxites, nickel laterites, mineral sands, anything that is reasonably resistive. So what does resistive mean? Well, you need, you can't see that of course, but to get the 100 meters that we're kind of looking for, we still need to be in the thousands of ohm meters, even tens of thousands of ohm meters. So very specific environments where radar will work today. But what if we wanted to go deeper? And there's a couple of different ways we can do that. Um, the first one is, well, why don't we make a bigger bang? That's what we do in seismic, for example. We just make a bigger explosion. So we'll have a bigger transmitter pulse. Another way is if we can in increase the signal-to-noise ratio or maybe make a larger wavelength. So let's look at each one very quickly here. Unfortunately, making a bigger bang doesn't work with radar at all. That's, that's not the way to do it. Radar is about average power. And to, to have a larger average power is very difficult to do and also very dangerous. So that's not really the approach we want to go to. We can increase our signal-to-noise ratio by, again, stealing from the seismic industry instead of just a simple impulse, we can do a coded impulse, right, like a goal A code, and then cross-correlate on the way back and increase our signal-to-noise. And that's being done right now with the latest systems. But the biggest way to do it, and the easiest way, would just be to increase our wavelength. You know, the, uh, a radar system will give you about 10 to 15 wavelengths in penetration in a good environment. So if we have a larger wavelength, we'll get more penetration, right? And of course, lower resolution. And, and that's possible. And these are a couple of the radars that we've built. And they're absolutely massive. I mean, one of them has two boxes the size of this room that you've got to tow around, right? So it is theoretically possible. And what you end up getting is data that looks like like this, which is, yeah, 200, 250 meters penetration, but with a system the size of this room. So it's possible, but not very practical. What if we could get that kind of penetration with a much smaller antenna? And that's not being done before, but we're doing it right now. And in fact, last week, Jim McNay and I started a, a MIRA research project um, that seeks to use things like magnetic loop antennas to get an electrically large antenna in a physically small size. And if you can do that, then you do something cool of potentially bridging the gap between EM and GPR. So you'd have that penetration and the conductivity profiles producible by the EM systems, but also have the relatively high resolution of GPR. And if you can make it small enough, could you put that on a drone? That would be very cool. Two years from now, we hope to have this system up and running. And we have some nice uh, backing from, uh, from, from industry on this. There's other processing applications that have come out in the last few years. We're, we're exploring the use of image processing technology. So stepping away from seismic and, 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 and geophysical processing and calling the radar section a picture. And if we use a picture, we can do some really cool things because uh, image processing has a lot more algorithms available to it than simply uh, geophysics. And if we look at a really bad radar section, all those 
dipping horizons. They're not horizons. They're actually air, air reflections coming from trees and from buildings and all sorts of horrible things. And we'd look at this traditionally and go, that's a crap radar environment, this rich of clay. You're not going to get any information out of this. But if you use image processing algorithms, you end up with a section that actually looks pretty good. But what you can also do now is back calculate based on the back scatter. Now, radar is a, a function of, of water content in the ground and electrical resistivity. What if you can actually calculate the water content using top equations? And you can do that now with new processing techniques. So it's pretty cool what you can pull out of that radar information, even in something that would be considered pretty crappy data four or five years ago. This is what we're able to do now. So not only just see reflections, but actually find groundwater, for example. But all of these radar systems that I've talked about thus far are pretty expensive and, as I said, fairly bulky items. The way to really disseminate technology is to bring the cost down, just like we did with cell phones or computers or, or the, the, the GPS on my wrist, right? If we can get that, that size down, the cost down, then we can really do some cool stuff with it. And what we've got now is the concept of, of very low-cost radar systems and very small. What if you can make an entire radar system into, into this? And that's what it is. That's an entire radar system on this board. And this board is not very expensive, right? Now, what could you do with this? It's pretty small. We can probably even make it smaller than that. Well, the first thing you can do is put it in something really, really thin and stick it down a borehole. Now, if you have low-cost borehole radar probes, you can start combining it with other sensors, like NMR for moisture content, for example, or put it on a televiewer. And now you not only see what's going on in the hole, but you have the radar annulus that can go out 80 meters, 100 meters in granite, right? Very cool stuff. But what you can also do with borehole radar is do look-ahead radar using synthetic aperture radar. So, if, for example, in blast holes, we can poke a little rod that's one meter long with this board inside down into the rod, and it's actually looking ahead up to 20 meters what they're going to encounter. So things like uh, fractures or, or water fissures or, or dikes, and that's being done right now in South Africa and the Gold Reef. Pretty cool technology, only because we were able to miniaturize the entire radar system into this. Pretty cool. Now this is pretty light, right? What else can you do with it? Well, light, small, let's put it in the air. And of course, the next thing to do is let's just stick it on a drone. And that's the obvious thing. And that's just an off-the-shelf DJI Phantom uh, carrying uh, an air launch radar antenna. The, the applications, we're still trying to figure out what we can do with this technology. But we've already put radars on drones. And it works very, very well. But the coolest thing you can do is if they're that small and that portable, let's make them into geophones. And what you can do with geophones is 3D seismic. Well, let's do 3D radar. So what we do is we make hundreds of these things in China and distribute them over a mine site. And if anybody was at my talk a couple days ago, I showed this data. Um, and what we're able to do is do a full 3D volume cube, right? Which is really never possible with, with, uh, with GPR because the sensors are so expensive. And so this is a, a limestone mine in the Dominican Republic. And we put out a couple of hundred of these things. and with mesh networks, we're able to address each one individually and have transmit from one and receive from another. And what you end up with is absolutely unprecedented visualization of void structures that you could never do with geophysics before. And each one of those pixel sizes are centimeters in size, right? And we know this because we've drilled it and used laser scanners. So it's pretty cool technology what you can do just by miniaturizing and making things low cost. That's the end of my talk. Are there any questions? You don't, and, and, and that's physics, right? At the end of the day, it's an omnidirectional uh, borehole antenna. You can make directional antennas, but what happens is the diameter gets quite large because you need a slot or you need a loop antenna, or you have to go high frequency, in which case your penetration drops. So we're looking at antennas that are in the, in the 100 to 50 megahertz range, and to directionalize them is essentially against the laws of physics. So you have to deal with, with the omnidirectional nature. And if you're looking for or, or localizing a single target, then you're looking at triangulation, so multiple boreholes and mapping out where that target is coming from. That's the, really the only solution. I, I, absolutely, I should have mentioned that. So it's about 200 meters by 60 meters and 70, or 70 meters deep. So, okay, I mean, this is an ideal environment. It's highly resistive. It's limestone. It's a, it's a perfect environment. You're not going to get 70 meters penetration, but it's a great test environment to show the resolution that you can get with distributed mesh networked GPR systems. Yeah. Anything else? All right. Come and see me at the booth if you have other questions. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you.